Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about a very exciting study that just came out of the University of Maryland from Dr. Alessio Fasano and his team. Uh, I recently spoke to Dr. Fasano and was thanking him for his great work and he made it very clear that he does not do it alone, of course, and he has an amazing team. So. I want to make sure that I acknowledge his team as well. So this came out just this month in um, Allergy and Immunology and it's called Leaky Gut and Autoimmunity. What it has to do with is autoimmune disease. Now there are over a hundred different autoimmune diseases. Celiac disease is of course an autoimmune disease. Type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, MS, lupus, the list goes on and on. When you take all of these diseases together as a whole, they uh, are the third leading cause of death when taken together. So this is something that very much impacts our society. Uh, traditionally, what's done for autoimmune disease are, uh, other than celiac disease, which is the only autoimmune disease where the trigger gluten is absolutely known and a change of diet is what's recommended, but otherwise uh, usually auto, um, sorry, immune suppressive drugs are given. Uh, because what happens with autoimmune disease, the definition is um, that the immune system, so autoimmune, the immune system is attacking self. That's where the word auto comes from. So your immune system is of course designed to attack bad guys, cancer cells and bacteria and parasites and viruses, etc. So all of a sudden it's attacking you. In celiac disease, it's attacking your small intestine. In diabetes, it's attacking your pancreas. And that's the nervous system, etc. So um, Dr. Fasano several years ago did a study that r really started to give us some insight as to the connection between gut health and autoimmune disease. And what he showed in a study um, working with rats was that um, when la uh, rats had a leaky gut, which is something we know gluten causes, that uh, they were more likely to develop an autoimmune disease. And in these particular rats, they were inbred to develop type 1 diabetes. So these were uh, a species of rat that were inbred to have this disease because the researchers were uh, doing research on type 1 diabetes. So these particular uh, rat species um, got to puberty in several weeks and developed type 1 diabetes one for one. Um, but in this particular study, uh, Dr. Fasano gave them a certain drug, uh, prevented the leaky gut from occurring, and two-thirds of the rats did not get type 1 diabetes. So this new study out this month is, is kind of a continuation of that, and uh, he, he goes on to say something that I've seen clinically for years, and have stated clinically for years, but of course I'm not a researcher, so I didn't have the research to back it up, and I'm so I'm particularly thrilled at this because um, what he talks about is that auto perpetuation, meaning once you have an autoimmune disease, there's no way to stop it. In other words, the immune system is considered out of control, it's attacking this body part, there's no way to stop it, plus when you have one autoimmune disease, you're much more likely to develop others. And it had been thought that there was really nothing to do about this. Um, We've proven that wrong clinically, as I said, but now this study is um, making great strides to refuting that particular um, thought process, which is in this study, Dr. Fasano states that auto-perpetuation, he feels is not true, and autoimmune diseases could be um, slowed and even reversed, which once again is what we see here clinically by getting the gut healthier, handling that leaky gut. And once again, one of the major causes for leaky gut is gluten intolerance and celiac disease. Uh, gluten causes that you're supposed to have uh, kind of a gatekeeper system. So if you can imagine your surface area of your small intestine is the size of a tennis court, which is kind of mind-boggling when you, when you think of all that in your abdomen, um, but it, it's huge, the size of a tennis court. And in between the cells, there are literally gatekeepers that open and close depending on what wants to get out of the intestine and out into your bloodstream. And the gatekeeper mechanism is supposed to allow good things like food out, and it's, not a, it's supposed to let bad things out. So it's, that's why it's that 
that a very alive gatekeeper system opening and closing uh, depending on who's, who's trying to gain access. And um, with uh, gluten intolerant celiac disease and, and the ensuing leaky gut, uh, the analogy is the uh, gatekeepers have left the gates wide open and everything can pass willy-nilly and what happens are uh, things called antigens, things that your immune system then later attack, get out into your bloodstream and then uh, your bloodstream attacks them and the problem is that a lot of the proteins of gluten, as an example, are very similar to other proteins in the body. So uh, the protein gluten gets out into the bloodstream, the immune system of the blood attacks it, and it, it gets so uh, revved up into attacking this gluten that it's seeing frequently, it starts to make errors to other proteins in the body that look similar. So as an example, um, the proteins in the pancreas can look very similar to the protein gluten, and so now the body starts attacking your pancreas. So once again, we used to think once this started, there was no way to stop it. Uh, now we know better, and once again, we see this clinically, and it's very exciting when you can get that immune system to settle down and start making the correct distinctions once again. Knowing your pancreas is your pancreas, or your thyroid is your thyroid, or your nerves are your nerves, and not a bad guy. So that really is how autoimmune disease works and how it can be reversed is by getting the immune system to relax, make the proper decisions, and not be so inundated by bad things coming its way. And that comes from a leaky gut. So that's the whole uh, sequence of events here. And so it comes back to that gut, finding out if you're gluten intolerant or not. Uh, certainly other things can cause leaky gut, uh, certain, uh, certain uh, drugs can, can cause that, being on antibiotics a great deal, so there are other causes. Gluten we know dietarily to be the major one. Uh, dairy products are thought to be in there as well. So one, you have to diagnose what's causing the leaky gut, but then you have to heal the leaky gut. And that's getting into those secondary effects of gluten intolerance, meaning that Simply removing gluten is not enough to heal completely that leaky gut. So then we get into cross-reactive foods and hidden infections and the various things that, that we've talked about before, um, which you can look at other videos to see more about. Uh, but there is a kind of a stepwise system that we go through to determine how, w what factors are affecting the leaky gut and then address them. Once again, this is a natural treatment, no drugs, no surgery, so not difficult to do, but critical to do. So if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have autoimmune disease in your family, this is important for you. If you have questions, please let me know. That's what I'm here for. This is the third leading cause of death in our country, something we really need to do something about, and this research is uh, very validating for what I see and will make big strides, I think, in uh, helping us to, to lessen the amount of autoimmune disease that we're seeing, which would be wonderful. So until next time, I wish you very good health.